Greetings, folks. Welcome to another complete guide to horror movies top 10 list. I'm Coop, and today I'll be counting down my top 10 kills of everyone's favourite dream boat, Freddy Krueger. I am your boy, right now, Nancy. All Freddy movies, including the remake, have been taken into consideration with this list, so without any further ado, let's get jiggy with it. What's with kids today, huh? No respect. Number 10, Gwen Holbrook, Mirror Mirror, A Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Alrighty, let's get this one out of the way. Granted, I did not enjoy this reimagining of the classic movie, but credit where credit is due. Right at the end of this messy, needlessly dry and uninteresting take on the Freddy universe, the movie finally gives us something decent. After seemingly killing Freddy after pulling him into the real world, slitting his throat and setting him ablaze, Nancy Holbrook and her mother Dr Gwen return home from the police station after being told the remains of Freddy haven't been found. After a heartfelt moment between mother and daughter, Freddy appears in the mirror behind Gwen, plunging his glove into the back of Gwen's head and dragging her into the mirror, ending this shit show on a positive note. Was it worth the ride? You be the judge. I want you to go straight up to bed, okay? Ah, uh, I think the fuck not, you trick ass bitch. Number nine, Mark Davis, cut through the fire, Freddy versus Jason. The horror crossover everyone had begged for for years was finally made a reality in 2003. Whilst obviously this movie was never going to stack up to the best of either Elm Street or Friday franchises, it's a very silly movie I still look back on fondly. Mark Davis, who along with Will Rollins, has just escaped from an institution that they have been locked in for years due to the Springwood authorities wanting to cover up Freddy's existence due to fear of more deaths, has somehow returned home with his room still intact and the electricity bill paid. Hey, it's a horror comedy, I'll let it slide. Mark, unfortunately, has struggled to heed his own advice that he has been warning others of. Don't fall asleep. Freddy will get you. After seeing a terrifying vision of his deceased brother in the bath, through which Freddy gives the audience some unnecessary exposition of the Jason situation, he is asked to send a message, which he refuses. Laurie and Will arrive just in the nick of time to watch him die. Womp womp. Banging on the window to try and rouse the sleeping Mark, his body bursts into flames. Running to the window in fear, Freddy slashes Mark across the face, killing him leaving behind a message burned into his back that he is <clears throat> back. Good one. And hey, pretty neat penmanship too. There's a little message for me, will ya? Number eight, Greta Gibson. You are what you eat. A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. In the 1989 sequel to The Dream Master, Freddy decides to take a swipe at diet culture. Greta Gibson, an aspiring model who has recently lost her friend to Freddy, is forced to socialise at a dinner party held by her posh and unbearably rude mother. Rubbing her forehead in pain at the lack of humanity her mother and friends are showing after her friend's death, Greta falls asleep. Hey, I would too. When offered food, Greta declines as she isn't hungry. Shock and awe erupts from the table due to her resistance, with an argument ensuing between mother and daughter, her mother chastising her for embarrassing her guests. Once Greta has had enough, she lashes out at her horrible mother for the way that she treats her and the comments on her weight. Enter Mr. Kruger. Freddy, adorned in a chef's outfit, straps Greta to a ghastly high chair, presenting her with a platter of flesh and vegetables with a children's doll as garnish. Lovely. Bon appetit! Freddy forces the food down her throat as Greta begins to bloat and expand like Mr. Creosote in Monty Python's Meaning of Life, ultimately causing her to choke and die at the dinner table. Biting commentary, I'll allow it. Number seven, Julie McKenna, more than one way to skin a cat, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. I'd like to start off by saying Wes Craven's New Nightmare is a movie I will defend to my grave. A wonderful self-aware and meta ride into the horror movie psyche, a successful experiment that paved the way for the Scream franchise, which is still going strong. I had a feeling. Heather Langenkamp, playing herself, takes her son Dylan to the hospital after he's experiencing dreams and psychosis brought on by the ancient supernatural entity that is taking the form of Freddy Krueger in his dreams. Leaving to retrieve Dylan's stuffed dinosaur, he is left in the care of actress Julie McKenna, also playing herself, who portrayed Tina in the original Nightmare on Elm Street movie until she returns. Paying homage to the way Tina was killed in the original movie, the Freddy Enigma jumps into action. Invisible to everyone except the young boy, he stabs Julie in the back with his trademark glove and drags her into the air. Hospital staff rush to the scene to witness Julie floating and instantly retreat. Yeah, big help y'all. Freddy drags her up the wall and onto the ceiling, antagonising the poor child with lines such as, ever played skin the cat? 
before ultimately snapping her neck, sending her plummeting to the floor dead. That kid is going to need some therapy, I think. Next! Number six, Sheila Kopecki. Where's my inhaler? A Nightmare in Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. This one always got to me for several reasons. One, I had a few involuntary naps in high school, and two, I'm an asthmatic. Eek. In this scene, Alice, who has recently had Kristen's dream warrior powers of bringing people into her dream transferred to her by the late Kristen, has fallen asleep in class. Little does she know, so is Sheila. Not realising she pulled Sheila into her dream, she looks over and sees Sheila panicking. A blood-inscribed message appears on Sheila's exam paper reading, Learning is fun with Freddy. Wiping the paper to see if it is real, Freddy's glove erupts from her work, grabbing her and confining her to the chair. After peeling an apple with his glove, Freddy approaches Sheila and asks, Wanna suck face? Yuck. Without further delay, Freddy presses his disgusting lips onto Sheila, sucking the life out of her in the dream world and reducing her to a deflated tent. In the real world, Sheila suddenly awakes, having an asthma attack that takes her life. Breathtaking. You flop. <laughs> Number five, Jennifer Caulfield, Square Eyes, A Nightmare in Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Who says an addiction to TV can't get you killed? Someone is about to find out the hard way. Jennifer Caulfield, one of several teenage patients admitted to Western Institute, the last of the Elm Street children, is TV obsessed and one day hoping to be an actress. One evening, she's in the common area after everyone is in bed watching a late night talk show. Without realizing, she drifts off to sleep. As she continues to watch in her dream, Freddie makes a cameo yelling, Who is that fuck what you think? At the host before the TV goes static and starts to malfunction. Confused, Jennifer approaches the screen to investigate further after having no luck with the remote, drawing closer to the ghostly voices that are emanating. Bad move. As she gets close to the TV, arms burst out of the side of the TV, grabbing her and lifting her into the air, with Freddie's head popping out of the top of the television. Freddy, in typical fashion, drops one of my personal favourite one-liners of the entire franchise. This is it, Jennifer. You're big breaking TV. Jennifer screams as Freddy yells, Welcome to prime time, bitch, and thrusts her head into the television set, electrocuting and killing her. That is certainly one way to break the habit. Oh, right. You gotta be a TV star. Wait and see. Number four, The Party Guests, Pool Party Massacre, A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. You know, I still feel like this entry in the franchise copped way more flack than it ever deserved. It's a different take, sure, but I think it works. Glenn, who is haunted by Freddy Krueger, who wants to use him as a vessel for his bidding, has been invited to a pool party. Yay! Unfortunately, it does not go to plan. Glenn returns to the party after leaving in fear as he can feel Freddy starting to take control. Upon returning, Lisa tries to comfort him and tells him it is his fear that is giving Freddy control. While this is going on, some strange phenomena starts to take place amongst the festivities. Doors begin to lock, windows shut, and the pool begins to heat. Not good. Once Freddy ultimately takes control, it's game over for many party guests. Freddy unleashes upon the party goers in spectacular fashion, slashing a few, burning others, and causing at least one to get killed in the stampede of bodies trying to escape. Freddy is eventually confronted and leaves on his own accord, but not before scaring everyone to gain the power he needs to keep his Eva power alive letting them know, you're all my children now. Great suspense leading up to the onslaught and a massacre that does not let the viewer down. I rate it. Get out of here! Get out of here! Right? Number three, Philip Anderson, Puppet Master, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Do you sleepwalk? Well, make sure Freddy doesn't find out about it. Philip is enjoying a nice doze when Freddy appears via a puppet in his room. Morphing into a full-size Freddy, Philip looks up to see him standing at the end of his bed. Yikes. Before he can react, Freddy cuts his arms and legs, pulling out the veins and controlling him like a puppet. With no help from his roommate or the nurse on duty, Freddy leads Philip up to the top of the building. Mute character Joey finally notices and manages to sound the alarm, but it's too late. In the dream, Freddy cuts the veins he is controlling, forcing Philip in the real world to plunge to his death below. A deathly stroll indeed. Number two, Tina Gray, the first of many, a nightmare on Elm Street. Ah yes, the very first on-screen Freddy kill. We have mentioned the homage earlier in the list, but it truly does not hold a candle to the original. After having a dream about Freddy the night before where she awoke with slash marks in her nightgown, Tina invites her friends to stay the night to keep her company. That evening, Freddy pays her a fatal visit. 
In her dream, she notices pebbles being thrown at her window. Going to investigate, she finally meets him face to face. Freddy toys with her by chasing her, scratching his claws along metal, cutting off his own fingers in front of her, and also revealing a ghastly face between his own when Tina struggles to fight him off. Her boyfriend Rob awakes beside her as she screams in her sleep. Rod witnesses an invisible claw slash open her stomach and watches in horror as Tina first floats around the room before being dragged up the wall and onto the ceiling, eventually killing her. A violent and classic scene that cemented Freddy as a horror movie juggernaut we all still think about 40 years later. Truly marvelous. Hello! I know I want to freshen up! I wish you would freshen up too. Get up there! Oh, oh you want this? Oh, yeah, who's it? Who's it? Daddy, you kick it like you want it! <laughs> Honorable mentions Rod Lane, A Nightmare in Elm Street, No Time to Hang. Taryn White, A Nightmare in Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, Let's Get High. Debbie Stevens, A Nightmare in Elm Street 4, The Dream Master, Roach Motel. Dan Jordan, A Nightmare in Elm Street 5, The Dream Child, A Need for Speed. Carlos Rodriguez, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, Ears to Hear. Number one, Glenn Lance, Blood Eruption, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Of course this is number one. I think what is most horrifying about this death scene is the fact that you never see inside the character's dream. In considering what is taking place in the real world, I shudder to think. Glenn is doing the best to try to stay awake as per Nancy's advice by listening to loud music and watching TV, but unfortunately succumbs to his tiredness. You snooze, you lose. Freddy's glove appears from the bed he's laying on and pulls him inside, and then it begins. A reverse waterfall of blood begins to flow out of the bed and onto the ceiling, creating a disturbing yet beautiful image that still holds up in horror cinema today. A brutal and bloody end for Glenn, and a legacy cemented for Freddy and the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. In my opinion, it simply cannot be topped. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching and joining me on this journey into our nightmares. If you enjoyed this, check out our podcast episodes and other countdown lists on our channel. We haven't yet done a deep dive on our podcast into the Freddy movies, so leave us a comment if you think we're way overdue for this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Complete Guide to Horror, and have yourself a good night's sleep. Ciao. When I was lying, I might have been a little naughty, but after they killed me, I became something much, much worse. The stuff nightmares are made of. The children still fear me. And their fear gave me the power to invade their dreams. And that's when the fun really began. Until they figured out a way to forget about me. To erase me completely. I mean, being dead wasn't a problem. But being forgot! Now that's a bitch! Nobody remembers me, but they come back!